thanks for staying with us now as a highly religious nation. Where do we draw the line between faith and disregard of the rules of the land? Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has left some of us in total state of confusion as to how some of our religious leaders have constantly shown their disregard for government laws. This can also be seen by men in uniforms, as you see a good number of them clearly flaunting the wear a face mask policy at their duty post and that they are supposed to uphold. You know, could this be a leadership problem or some people just believe they are simply above the law? Um, that's the question for tonight. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 So today we have good news. For those that want to join in, they want to call into the um, show, at the other break, when we take the second break, you can call into the show to just, but just um, one minute or so, you'll be able to minute. share, <laughs> we'll, we'll be able to hear what you have to say for those that prefer to call in. But tonight is ladies night out and that's why we're giving room for people to be able to call in. All right, so two things happened. So maybe we'll call the video of the immigration officer first. Absolutely. So people will know why we're having this conversation. Um, if they would just play the, the video for the immigration officer, so you see it, then we now have the conversation. Give my passport, please. Dan Tala, give me my passport. Give me my passport, Dan Tala. Yes, Dan Tala, give me my passport. I've quickly got my passport because I asked them to give me to, to wear their mask and they refused. And they're telling me to delete the picture because I am not. I'm, I'm, I've, I've refused to delete it. They are delaying me as the Nigerian immigration. I'm a troublemaker. I said nobody is going. I'm sorry, Oga. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. Give me my passport. Give me my passport. What are you doing? Or you charge me. Give me my passport. Give me my passport. What is the problem? My problem is that I asked them to wear masks. My passport, because I asked them to give me to, to wear their mask and they refused. And they're telling me to delete the picture because I am not, I'm, I'm, I've, I've, I've refused to delete it. All right, so that is one of many stories. So I'm so happy EC is on set with me today because I remember the initial lockdown when the government announced the lockdown where we had to come to the studio um, under the, the, the strict lockdown that we had in yes. March, I think, last year, 2020. March, April. I remember several times I, I had to call the PRO of the police exactly. um, to bail me out because his policemen... Us, you mean? <laughs> yeah, well, to bail us out because his policemen were, were constantly harassing. And the only thing I told them that, Oga, you Wear are not your wearing your mask. nose mask. So you do not expect me to bring down the window. COVID you know, is out COVID there. COVID is real. So if you are interacting with different commuters on the road, that are flaunting the rules. I am legally supposed to be on the road because I'm working. Exactly. And amongst the people that are on the exemption list. So you are not wearing your nose mask and you're asking me to bring down my window. I cannot do that. And what and if that, you that are caused, a carrier? That caused us to be several times we were stuck, held back. Held back in the, in the what's it called? The in, checkpoint. In, 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 at the checkpoints during the lockdown. So mm -hmm. this woman is one in many. Absolutely. So the question is, if these people are supposed to be the ones upholding the laws, are the ones flaunting the rules, where do we even start from in this fight for, um, what's it called, curbing the numbers of, the, rise, the rising numbers of COVID-19? Let me come to you, then I'll come to Maury. It is us. It's all about us. We, the individuals, we are the citizens. We are the ones that are supposed to, you know, uphold the law. And the men in uniform are not any different. So it's just like, for example, let's take COVID, as, uh, COVID aside. From day one, they say, don't beat the traffic light. You see government officials blowing one way. Not once, not twice, time and time again. And even if you're stuck in traffic, you, get, you hear the, the, them siren. honking the horn and with a siren. And if you don't get off the road, they might even hit your car, which I have even experienced. They might hit your car or they might even come down and you know um, harass, you. harass you and intimidate you. So we have seen this time and time and time again. So COVID is not an exception. Hmm. They think it is 
just business as usual. How and can ignorance you? Hmm. is a huge has a huge role is to it play. Ignorance or it's just blatant impunity because how can yes. an immigrant do you know that the mm -hmm. first point of call to any nation who the first people you meet an in the country are the immigration exactly. officers. If you are saying that COVID is real and mm -hmm. I'm coming into your country and I'm not seeing you exhibiting, then who else should be the ones wearing the nose mask? Let me come to Mori. Mm -hmm. Mori, are you there? Okay, first. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Firstly, to address the immigration officer issue, I think that I like I honestly don't know how to feel about it because if you are in the diaspora or if you travel out of Nigeria and you are coming in, See the that. amount of stress that it takes you to like on the website, on every website, on every step of the way, they are asking you about COVID nineteen, they are making you do COVID test. There's even a specific one, a PCR test. So to now be an immigration officer to be the one acting like that is very is 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 unheard of. But then I also think that this is not just a Nigerian issue. Like this is a is a general issue. The way we have people like this here is how we have them everywhere. So how I try to cope is just to understand that not everybody can have sense. Because <laughs> if you try and sit down and analyze it, you're just going to run yourself crazy. Mm -hmm. Science is telling you this thing. There's fact on ground, but you still choose so and then you see that you are educated. So it has mm -hmm. to be something wrong with you somewhere beyond comprehension because I don't understand. Okay, so um, I was having this conversation with someone this evening and, you know, we were just having this conversation and it's so interesting. You go into a government, um, uh, uh, sorry, a, 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 no, no, an, uh, maybe like a conference where government officials are there mm -hmm. and the number one citizen of Nigeria the president of the, the Federal, Republic, uh, Federal Republic of Nigeria is there. You will see that every other person is wearing their nose mask. Aside. Aside him. Mm -hmm. And that is supposed to be the other way around. Right? The differentiating factor between Joe Biden and Trump is that he is leading by example. So where is the role of leadership? If we say that you are a leader, mm -hmm. you are supposed to lead by example. As the number one citizen of the country of the federal republic of nigeria you are the number one image of what nigeria should look like if you are not wearing the mask is it a thing of okay big manism or what exactly would make the president of the federal republic of nigeria not wear a nose mask or is it because he's assuming that every other person has worn a nose mask so it means that he's immune no what you're doing is that you have clearly set a bad example for the rest of the people to follow and if everybody is, you know, doing this in their little sphere, mm -hmm. right? As for instance, if you come into Plus TV, every time you would see the MD of the company wearing well, his nose mask. mask. Exactly. Because if you are supposed to be the top of the company, you are the one that is supposed to tell the people, Oga, madam, you see me, what am I doing? I'm wearing my nose mask. So you must suit. follow suit. Exactly. More, you want to come in? No, I was even saying that the employees see, see you wearing a nose mask, they are automatically already know to do the same. Because if the other guy is wearing it, I would, why would, who am I not to wear it? So it's just plain, simple mathematics. Absolutely. So another thing is this. Um, how do we address this issue? This issue is um, we have a leader who doesn't wear his um, nose mask mm -hmm. or he doesn't wear his mask. Now, there is a difference between a boss and a leader. And most times when they're talking about the president, they call him their boss. So there is a difference between a boss and a leader. A leader leads by example, just like we have with Biden. A boss is a Trumpy. And a Trump <laughs> is do as I say, <laughs> do as I say, not like I do. Because mm -hmm. every, if anybody does the thing um, the uh, President uh, Trump has done, I'm telling you, the person would have been thrown into jail without even asking questions, mm. you know? So where we have a boss, a boss says, do as I say, go there, jump into the fire, but I won't jump into the fire for you. So it's a simple logic. Our leaders have to understand that they are here to serve us and they are supposed to lead by example. Mm -hmm. And the earlier they get to know this, the better for us. And we as a people, are we a reflection of our leaders? Because what, the moment COVID um, ban was, um, the lockdown was lifted, off, yes. we all went, went haywire. Back, yeah. 
you go into the marketplace, people are not wearing their nose masks. And if you ask them, oh, why are you not wearing your nose mask? It's as if they're looking at you like uh, you are no, some alien. kind of alien, you know, <laughs> for doing what is right. <laughs> so it's, it calls a lot to mind, are we responsible for the kind of leaders we have? Hmm. Or the leaders themselves are responsible for us. It's a two-way street. It's a symbiotic relationship. We can't exist without the other. Okay. So we're moving to the clerics because now this one, <laughs> we're going to spend we're a lot going of to time there. Feathers. <laughs> hey. All right. So we saw a video online and we thought to, um, to add this to the conversation because we are a highly religious society. We can't take away religion. When you're talking Nigeria, the first thing you think is either Christian or Muslim. Mm -hmm. We are a highly religious um, society. Absolutely. And how many of us, you know, um, just submit to the authority of our pastors. We are plenty. Hmm. Anything pastors say, we do. So we saw this video and we thought that, you know what, this will be the base or the foundation of the conversation that we're going to have. Because exactly. now, if you go on social media, there are different things. And, hmm. I mean, sorry, different, different um, conversations from different men of God. So now it got me thinking, first of all, we have a divided house. I don't know about Muslims, so Christians, we are very divided. Totally. And maybe that is why certain things are not happening or not working for us because one pastor that you revere Too many will say one thing. Another pastor will come out and say another thing. So for me, I think, you know, let's just watch this video from the, the clergyman. Yeah. <laughs> but if you still want to wear a mask, wear it. <laughs> but don't, don't call yourself man of God. <laughs> <laughs> Baby of God. <laughs> you are a baby of God. Don't ever once you wear mask, you are just move, you have moved. You are a baby. Baby. baby of God. You're not even son. We can't call you son of God. Son is too high. We can't even call you child of God. So we now start talking like Peter. We're not Christian. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word of God. That you may grow the other. <laughs> you can frown if you like. Frown, bros. I have Zoe. Yes. So I want to hide my face. <laughs> All right. So because we don't want to just talk from a point of talking we want to be able to bring facts right hmm. i googled i said what does the bible say about government laws right and the scripture romans 13 came to you know so i checked right. so i wanted to i took it from the new king james version because like, people like the conch <laughs> one right and the title is submit submit to government it said let every soul be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Hmm. This is God telling you that there is no leader that is in place that I have not put there. Right? So if a government is telling you that do social distancing, where your nose? You see, that's why today I'm not absorbing the government from the conversation because exactly. they are also the problem. Exactly. It's like talking from two sides of your mouth. Mm -hmm. If you, as the government, you decide to do the right thing, and you know you um, what's it called? You decide to do the right thing, and you mm. you you observe those protocols that you are putting in place. Every other person will follow suit. So let us leave government aside. We know that they have a problem. Let's leave them aside. Mm. But the men of God. The clergymen, the, um, the mosque and the churches and all of that, they go about telling their members. Imagine a pastor saying that if you wear a nose mask as a pastor, you, should, you do not have the right to be called a man of God. Instead, you should be called a, a baby. baby. You, can't even, you do not even deserve the right to be called a child mm. or a son of God. Where do you even start from with this kind of conversation? I'm shocked. <laughs> first things first. I, I don't even know where to start, to be candid. But one thing I know is this. You can't, you can't push your opinions on people. We all have diverse opinions, okay? And this man of God has made his own opinion. But we also have another, uh, another set of men of God who also said, 
No, do we the will same come to thing. that. We'll come to that. Do this. We'll come and to that. They are being practical. You know because what? Because no, let's not let's not move too fast. <laughs> I like what you said that you should not shove your opinion yes. down other people's shoes. Let us leave it there. Uh, Mori, hmm. are you there? Mm hmm I'm here. I'm right here waiting for my turn. So yes. first, let me start by saying that it is the audacity of the clergyman for me, the audacity. He said it with so much confidence. My tummy was turning me when he was saying the video, when, when I was watching the video. But there's one thing that I always tell anybody, because even me, as you're, as you're, as you're seeing me like this, coming from the Muslim perspective, I'm still not Muslim enough to some Muslims. Mm -hmm. You understand? I'm too... Haram for the halal Muslims. This time I'll explain what the difference is between the both. But I always like to say that it is very important. I still posted it on my on my Instagram like last week. It is very, very important to know God for yourself. So that when your religious leaders start to mislead you or start to misbehave, you will at least be able to put them in check or at least leave if you cannot correct them. Mm -hmm. So instead of just following everything these people say, just try and find God and know him for yourself. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just what I have to say concerning this. Okay, so we're going to continue the conversation because now this is one man of God that we showed you. We have other men of God that brought out tweets, brought out messages, you know, that we're going to bring to the fore. But we'll do that right after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you. 